Welcome to another photorec.tv photo critique. Just a reminder, if you would like to submit images for regular critique, you can do that at photorec.tv photography help. You can become a PRTV member. All of that information is right down below. Not only do you get regular image critiques, but you get access to the support group, my Lightroom tutorials, my Photoshop tutorials, and so much more. Considering becoming a member today, supporting what we do here at photorec.tv and helping you grow as a photographer. Our first image we're going to start off with is Chris's, and uh, this is definitely in Iceland. I recognize this. Now, for a lot of these critiques, uh, participants have sent in DNG files, which I really appreciate because one, it allows me to see the edits you have done already, and two, it allows us to edit the file and really see the changes. JPEGs, you know, um, you don't have as much room to edit. And DNGs, raw files, they're all really nice. So this is a, a cool shot. You have photographed waterfalls in probably the more uncommon way. That is with a shorter shutter speed that really kind of captures the flow. A lot of times we see waterfalls, and I, I tend to do this more often than not, shot at longer exposures where they really get soft and flowy and silky, which is a very cool look, but it doesn't always give you the sense of power and a shorter shutter speed does. That said, however, looking over at your shutter speed, that is higher than it needs to be. And then your aperture is wider than it needs to be because really, I like this image a lot. I, I love your composition. Uh, rule of thirds, let's do just pretend like we're going to crop this for a second and see that you have already done a little bit of cropping. But rule of thirds, you've got this main part of the water coming down uh, on the right hand rule of thirds. You've got this little flowery grassy stalk thing in the bottom left corner. Uh, all really works really nicely, but this is not as sharp as it could be. I feel like we have good sharpness here. Uh, your focus is probably someplace around here and you know, eight. On a wide focal length, we saw this recently on my Make Photos uh, episode two, where I talk about how wide a focal length, how wide an aperture I needed to go to with a wide focal length to really get a fence to be out of focus that was close to me. You were kind of seeing that here. Um, F3.5, everything looks pretty in focus, but not quite down here. So F5.6 here would have been fantastic, and the water still would have been frozen in this kind of cool sheet look um, at 1 2,000th of a second, or even a little bit slower than that. Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind in the future. Make sure that you are not shooting faster than you need to be. There's no real benefit to that most of the time. All right, so I would like to see this a little sharper. We could try, we could cheat a little bit. Um, radial filter, I'm gonna put on there. It's very funky right now. It is it needs to be inverted. Uh, and then for some reason, I need to balance the temp and the exposure. And really all I want is to bring the clarity up just a little. It's very hard to kind of re, uh, to resharpen something that is slightly out of focus. And the other thing you can do is bring this into Photoshop and try the high pass filter and the other, there's several different sharpen options as well to get that just to be a little bit sharper because I do think it's a neat part of this story. Other things that I've noticed that you have done is you've used the brush tool to really increase the saturation and the clarity of your rainbow. I'd say go ahead and you know double that. Do the second guy over here. Ooh. Don't need that much contrast. Let's bring that down. What else is causing that? The clarity that high? Maybe that's why you decided. Just, just a touch more. Just makes it pop just a little bit more. Now, another thing that I've seen that you have done is up here, you've brought a gradient down to um, actually brighten the sky and desatur desaturate it so that you've got these kind of a little bit more of a darker stormy clouds. I'd actually uh, bring that saturation back up a little bit. I think a little bit of color up there is fine. And I would also cool it just a little. It just gives those clouds just a little bit more funky texture um, and kind of pop to me. Two other minor things. One, I think this is a bird up here. That little white keeps catching my eye. I'd suggest removing it.
And one other spot right here, not sure what that is, might be a little fly. It's amazing what these cameras can pick up. But it also caught my eye a couple of times, and I'm going to get rid of it. And there, I think we've got a great picture. Nice job, Chris. Pam. Pam, I think we traveled together to um, Tanzania, and I might have been not too far away from you when you took this picture. So amazing how close we were with the animals. Now, this was taken with a 600 millimeter lens, so we weren't that close, but you've really filled the frame here. That's good. Uh, what's not good is the little bit of cut off the ear. I really wish we had all of that other ear there with just a little bit of room above this lioness's head. Um, and it needs to be sharper. So I just showed that clarity trick with Chris's. This to me is a little bit too soft, a little too um, out of focus to really work on and try to get sharper. I hope you have some other images that are sharper. I'm not sure what is causing it. It looks like to me focus might have been back here a little bit more. So if we were shooting this at an angle, maybe you're off a little bit to the right shooting. It feels very much like you're shooting straight on. Um, but this seems to be the sharpest part of the image. And I really wish it was out here a little bit more. Other than that, exposure in these kind of harsh, bright conditions is good. And I love the tones and the colors. As a thumbnail, it looks fine. But on this bigger screen here, it's just a little bit out of focus. And there really isn't much we can do with that. Caleb's got a film scan. This was taken with his Nikon F2 50mm 1.8 at F8. F8 is great. Kodak's Tri-X 400 film. Adjustments to the highlights, whites, and clarity. A graduated filter applied. You know, I feel like I... I don't want to be labeled as the 16 by 9 guy, but the first thing that strikes me is a lot of empty space up here. And some of that you can argue is balanced by the strength of what's going on down here, but it's not quite enough. I mean, let me face it first. I really like this image. I think this is uh, really a cool image, um, and I think it's composed well, but I think a 16 by 9 crop is going to strengthen it. And let me let me talk through why. We bring the 16 by 9 crop down. And we've now kind of divided this image neatly up into three sections in my mind. This foreground uh, that adds some depth to the image. The middle ground where we have our, I think your subject is, the, you know, these uh, working fishing boats all tied up at the dock. And then above that, we have kind of this empty sky now a little bit less of it balanced by these boats and two seagulls perfectly exactly like i used to draw birds in third grade uh sorry how i still draw birds today um just you know nicely silhouetted in the sky we got one more off in that distance there that's fine i think that's good uh so to me that's a, a stronger image Editing wise, I think you've done a great job. It, a little heavy, I feel a little on the dark side, a little crunchy in here. I would actually bring the blacks up a tiny bit. I'm seeing very little change. Wow, very little change in there. So I'm gonna grab the radial. Really, it's just kind of in this area here. Oh, you wanted a blue one, didn't you? And invert. Protect those highlights, though. Mm, don't know if I'm loving what's happening here. I really just want to kind of get rid of that black so that it's not quite as crunchy. Man, that's a very subtle change, but I do think it's a little bit better. Let's try to bring up just the blacks in that area here. There. I think that's it. I love the grain in the image. I think that looks great and overall really nicely done. Andrea has the structure that is very interesting to me. One of the ways to make an interesting picture is to capture something interesting that kind of, you know, leaves some questions in the reader's mind. What exactly is this? It looks like it has security cameras on it. 
Is it a piece of artwork with security cameras? There's a sign on the other side. What does that sign say? I do love that you've captured enough of the surrounding landscape to know where we are. You've also stamped um, kind of a yucky watermark on there, but I understand some people like to do their watermarks. Um, so, you know, those clues tell us we're out probably someplace in Arizona or at least the southwest. And I can even see a few Suaro cactuses off in the distance here. Um, love this tone in the sky. Really, really nice. Let's see. Can we figure out what time of day this was shot? I'm assuming that's the moon coming up. 6.02 a.m. Yeah. Based on the colors in the sky, uh, I would say this is just before dawn. And we have our moon up there in Nikon D5300, 12 to 24 f4 lens. Uh, I think all of your settings in here are look great. Uh, I really like the composition. Left a little bit of room up here. Shooting at 12, so you're shooting as wide as you could with that lens. I do wish we could see kind of the completion of this corner down here. There's something about triangles, tangents, we've called them before on the show where they go off the screen, they, they draw the viewer's eye. So I start up here. Let's take uh, your info off there for a second so we can just kind of see this. I start up here in this pretty area and immediately I'm drawn to this triangle and just kind of follow it down in both directions. And we, we look at images as we read books here in the Western Hemisphere, for most of us, left to right. So I start up here and I kind of move my way this way and I hit the stone wall and then it carries me back this way off the page. And same here, I follow this off the page. So I would like to see the bottom of that. I don't think we have, uh, nope, this is the full crop. Nothing else has been done. Otherwise, I think that's, it's, it's really quite nice. We are seeing you know, you can see the results of shooting with a wider angle lens. We're starting to get some distortion and smearing out near the edges. So you want to watch out for that as far as shooting goes. Give yourself a little bit of extra room to crop in and kind of get rid of those smeary outdoor uh, outside edges. If you pay huge money for very expensive wide angle lenses, you get much less of that. But still, it's always nice to leave a little. And if you wanted to, you could work, you spend some time removing these guys. I don't think they'd be too much. They're very small and kind of hidden off there in the distance. Nicely done, Andrea. Tell us what it was. I, I don't know who sent this in, but this is someplace that I want to go. I would love to be here. I suspect, I'm going to guess Canada, someplace around Banff. Um, this is just a fantastic place to hang out and watch a sunset, which is what I think we're seeing right here. I love the composition. Um, let's see, pretty, no, 28 millimeters. Uh, love this kind of sense of the cabins sitting right on this lake. Uh, some people enjoying the sunset. I see a glass of wine or something. And of course, the sunset framed, or the clouds, I should say, um, being lit by the sunset framed by these mountains here. Very, very nicely done. I do wish these folks down here, they, they're part of the story and they're part of the story enough that I'd like to see them a little bit brighter. A couple different ways we could do that. We could grab our linear gradient tool. We could drag up and it's, let's warm it a little bit. And our exposure is already up a little bit, about half a stop. Let's, not too much. We don't want this, yeah, somewhere in there. And I think we could, we can straighten it a little bit. It's fairly subtle, but it does a decent job. And you know, let's let's bring up those shadows a little bit more, because not only do overall, because not only do we want this here to be a little bit more information, but I'd like these mountains to have just a little bit more uh, information for us, just sharing a little bit more of their story. And I'm going to warm it just a little bit more. Somewhere right around there. That's neat. We see this little bit of the reflection here. I'm trying to decide if I want to crop in to get rid of this light and this log here. Let's see what happens for a second if we crop in from the left. You've already done a little bit of cropping. Let's do a little bit more.
I like this. Um, I feel like we don't have to spend as much time looking for the people. They're, they're more in view for us. Um, they're right there and we can more easily see what they're looking at and follow their gaze up to the sky. The other thing, let's see, did you apply dehaze at all? Because I would suggest a little bit of dehaze. It's going to help on the mountains in the back. And whenever I apply a little bit of dehaze, then I tend to warm it a little bit more. Dehaze tends to cool things down. And I think this is great. Very nicely done. As I said, a very cool spot. And we've come to the end of another photorec.tv photo critique. As I said, if you would like to submit images for future critiques, you can find that information linked right down below. If you submitted your work, thank you. Thank you for putting it out there and letting us all play with it and learn from it a little bit. I hope you got something useful out of it as well. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.